Hello and welcome to the Seeking Heavens channel. I am your host, Tamara Calder Richardson. I thought we were going to go live 30 minutes ago. I had some technical issues, but I am here. So today we're going to be talking about my prophetic dream. And uh, I don't even want to go into announcements. I'm going to be talking about God's message to humanity, my prophetic dream about April 8th tomorrow. And I wanted to jump into that. If you want to get in touch with me, you know how to do that below. You can see the information. And also I have a friend, um, Dick Dingies, who is doing a, for another lady, they're doing it together. It's a meditative online prayer, positive manifestation and humanity tomorrow. If you want to get involved with that, it's 333 tomorrow. You can look at his um, email below. Just tell him you want the link and he'll send that to you. So that's, that is going on. Um, I wanted to talk to you uh, about, uh, first of all, those that you don't know me, I assume you all know me. <laughs> We're such good friends now. Uh, but seriously, um, those that you don't know, that don't know me, my name is Tamara Calder Richardson. I've had six near-death experiences, two of which that um, I spent a time with Jesus. One was three days in a induced coma, and I love him completely. I mean, he's my teacher. He's my best friend. He's my redeemer. I've been talking to him for years and I didn't know the word was called channeling, but I've been channeling him for a long time. When I have conversations with him, they are, for me, they're playful. They're just like talking to your best friend there. So there's a back and forth. And, uh, Sometimes I just talk to him a lot more than he talks to me, but then sometimes I'll be woken up in the night and he'll talk to me. But my conversation that I got with God last night, what was it was not a conversation. It was a, when it's God, it's pretty powerful. So it hasn't happened a lot. I got it in my near-death experience when, like when I was um, three years old and I had uh, was playing and had the nail go through my head. I heard, this is not your time. You have much to do. I knew that was God. It wasn't just a voice. It was all beingness in my every fiber in a body without a body. Like I knew that was God, like no argument there. It was like, whoa, they had such reverence and command. So um, I was, I have been, let me start back before that. I don't know if you haven't seen the Jesus speaks about the coming storm uh, make sure that you check that out. That was last Thursday. I got a channel message from Jesus about multiple inner, multiple things happening tomorrow. This is an inner energy job or however you want to say it. Now, please, um, I, before we get started, maybe we should do a little prayer because I want to make sure that this is not taken off. Uh, I've worked really, really hard with like nothing. Jesus told me July 2020. To start the Seeking Heaven channel, he even said the name, the Seeking Heaven, the Near-Death Experience, another phenomena. And he wanted to pull all kinds of people together, Christians, non-Christians, religious, non-religious, and because his love is abundant for everybody, right? And talk about all these different topics and pull us together. I mean, our problem has been is we have been, we've been, we've separated ourselves out from one another. Why would you do that? I mean, we are, we're family, but we've forgotten. So, uh, you know, God hasn't forgotten that. And he's trying to pull us back together. And we need to come together, especially now for humanity's sake. Um, anyhow, the Jesus message, he talked about that there are multiple things that are going on that are planned, that are somewhat nefarious. And the reason he says this is because he's got this under control. Okay. That doesn't mean we need to be naive and not uh, pay attention or to do our part, or be obedient, and that kind of thing from what we are what we need to get. So you can look at that message. Uh, that message didn't just start last Thursday. I got that February 2nd, again, the 17th. I got it again uh, 10 days later, more information, and then I finally gave the message yesterday. Last night was an entirely different thing. I did not expect. So I was um, woke up in the middle. Well, by the way, I've not been able to sleep for some time and I've been wake up and praying for humanity. That's going on. And while I'm saying these things and describing it to you, because, you know, I'm not the only one connected to God here. <laughs> so a lot of you may be getting similar information, similar symptoms. So just want to run that by you. So last night it was really powerful and I really um, was wasn't going to tell you all today this. I wasn't going to tell you. Uh, I know my husband does not want me doing this right now because I work really, really hard from nothing. 
no, nobody, no, nothing to 2.20 million views. Thanks to you and subscribers. Thanks to you. Not that that was my goal. It's not my goal, but what I'm saying is I don't want to have messages to help people and loving and healing messages to be removed. So maybe we should start with that, a prayer for the channel and then prayer for everyone watching and a prayer for tomorrow. And then we'll go into the message. So I think that that seems like that would be fair. And those that want to know more about me, they can see below and you can even see my near-death experience, my story interviews. You can, you can check me out. It's totally fine. I, I try to be an open book. All right. So let's go ahead and start and to go into a prayer for making sure that this is safe. And if, if this rings true in your soul, not just your heart, but your soul, pass it to as many people as you can and let them decide. People are grown ups. Let them decide and prepare. All right, so here we go. Father, Mother God, the creative source of all things, I just bring to you a heavy heart and I bring humanity to you. So many people are busy with their lives or, you know, the, the coming and goings of each day that you are not at the top of their list anymore. You're not even on the list. And I ask for a forgiveness and re a, a mass repentance from, from my brothers and sisters, including myself, that we have not put you first. And I know that you are the only true God. And I give you my heart and my love for you protecting and watching over us. I also thank you for your precious son, Jesus. I also thank you for all the angelic host that are watching over us and that are watching over us night and day when we don't even realize it. And I ask right now that this broadcast be cloaked from the enemy, that this, that there is no repercussions from this, that this, this is, this uh, episode is able to stay up and that people are able to see it. And then I ask your mighty angels to surround this and keep it protected and away from the enemy. And I ask those uh, from today, right now, through tomorrow and through this week to look to you for guidance, to take, um, to be calm and take good cheer that you are in charge. And I ask that you send angels, mighty fleets, mighty legions of holy, holy angels to everyone watching, to them, to their families, to their homes, to their pets, and that you keep them protected, that the enemy shall not come through in computers, nor phones, nor electrical outlets, nor in any way that we rebuke the enemy in the name of Jesus and through the blood of Jesus that was spilled, that you cannot touch that. And that I ask for not only to be protected, but a covenant and a protective blessing and a shield put all over our entire yards and property, our cars, everything that we are shielded. And we have a, we are, we are written on our forehead for you, God in Christ. And I just thank you for this time being here and help me to give the right words to tell everyone this vision that I saw, that it might help them in their journey and how to receive what the goings on in the next day or two. I say this with all my love and thank you for letting me be a vessel in Christ's name. Amen. Okay. Ooh, I get high just doing that. All right, cool. So let's go ahead and <laughs> Hey brother, Peter, how are you? I uh, love you. All right. Um, and then Eva, love you too. Their sister, Joan, the angels calling all angels. They are in the house tonight. Um, all right. So this is what's going on. I want to tell you about my, and it, my, my dream, my God dream. So, you know, the Jesus thing, see that again, this was different. So I was doing battle in my dream and then, um, and I'll tell you, um, what I saw, uh, uh, and what I said, <laughs> and I woke my husband up. um, so I'm, I'm seeing, um, all of a sudden I heard, I am, I am the one God. I, I am, what is this? I am powerful. And I am all powerful. That's what I heard. I was like, and it was like, uh, really loud and kind of booming. And then, then I had seven angels lined up at, at a, in the side. And I saw this, they, sh they burst the side and then they pointed and they showed me a vision. It was quick, quick, flash, 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 and a download. That's how I got it. And I was like, whoa. And I've had kind of a headache ever since. I'm like, whoa, it's just 
you know, because <laughs> God's trying to make room for my brain to hold all this. And so what I saw was the eclipse, but it wasn't the eclipse, you know, Jesus talked about that last time. Um, was it just that? So before I get into what I feel about that, I'm just going to tell you straight what the dream was. So uh, in this dream, there were, it looked like three eclipses kind of side by side. It was like a blur and then three moons. So it looked like to me that things were fluxing or moving, like there were multiple timelines and they were moving closer into one. So they were opening up, moving it into one. They were trying to flatten a timeline. And then I saw it looks like waves around it, but it was like, but what they were, were dark fallen angels. And they were what I would call, they were never human. They had no soul. Uh, and they were coming down, these wispy things, trying to find host, which might be a reason for not wanting to go out anymore. <laughs> just, just, just an idea there. Um, but that's what I saw. Okay, they were coming down. And then I saw this dark matter, um, which I think this was scientific, what I was getting. Um, and then I saw these things coming into the earth, and they look like little larvae. So apparently, like, these interdimensional from not a good, not a good realm, like a lower realm, like a demonic realm, or like these bugs. And they look like larvae uh, of like a little teeny scorpion, like a little, you know, except had a split tail on it, it looked like, but not the kind, the wig. It was just a weird looking little thing. Like, oh, I just went, oh, that's a new bug. So I think that meant they were um, infestating this with another dimensional, their, ugh, their stuff. They're, they're bugs, basically, okay, uh, which I have gone into haunted houses and seen these dimensional bugs. They're really creepy, okay, because they don't have bugs like us. Our bugs are better. <laughs> no, I'm just saying. Um, all right, so I saw that, and um, and then, then I heard the word really loudly, and I want to make sure I cover all this. I heard the word, um, let me make sure that exactly that I have this, because I wrote a lot of stuff down for, for you for you all here deconfiguration to deconfigure and deconfiguration. It was really loud. And I yelled it out last night and I yelled it out in French deconfiguration or something like that. And I was like, deconfiguration or I don't, anyway, that's what it came out. And I was like, deconfiguration, what is that? And so those of you that know me, I have also channeled Einstein and Tesla, and I actually have a client, if you're watching, hey, Mark, that I've channeled things for him on stars and stargates, which he's written, done research or written on. And so I get scientific stuff, right? I don't always know what it is. I have to do the research and go, what is that? But again, when you channel, you write down the information, you take it in, and you look at that later. So I heard deconfigure. Um, I did. So I did see that. I mean, I did see that word. I heard that word very loudly, deconfiguration. It woke, I, I woke my husband up, I think, by yelling at it. Oh, it's kind of strange. So I, um, what? let me tell you what I think that's going on and what that, that means. So let me start there with deconfigure because just right there. I looked that word up and that means to remove from a configuration or an arrangement to remove or cancel the configuration of something such as a reset. I wish I could make that up. That's what that means. Then, um, oh, hey, Gideon. I love, what a cool name you have. It's beautiful. God bless you. So I saw, um, you know, I'm seeing all this stuff. So they're opening a portal. Now, we all know that a lot of you that don't know, I'll just tell you, there's other channels that you can, um, gosh, I can't think. I'll put it in my channel. Uh, something else I think will be helpful. But we know that they're opening the CERN portals. These There are people, and I just want to speak to this. It's not real to me, but that doesn't mean it's not real, right? There are people that have lifestyles that I would never participate in, but they're real, right? And so they're real lifestyles, just not like the one that I, I live. So there are people that are really they're, they're serious about this. This is not a joke. They are Satanists. They are Luciferians. They're serious about this. And this is something that's a real thing. They, they do their covenant rituals and so forth, which I was shown that too. I, I was shown that that's what is helping amplify this. But we also know the CERN thing. They do rituals in front of it because they want to open this. And if you look, you can do your own research, CERN. I can pull up some things. And I do have some things to show you 
afterwards. So you'll have some information, but you can look that up and they're trying to find the God particle. Bottom line, they're trying to play God. I don't know what happened, but they really pissed off God because last night I don't get that kind of information from God. He was, he's, it's not good. And, and also those of you, especially if you're a Christian, you may not understand this, but in the Bible, it talks about the Hebrew God and that put no other gods before me. And, and so we think idolatry, okay, we don't worship little, you know, idols or anything. We only worship who this guy, right? Jesus, right? Okay. Cause he shows us the way he is the way. Uh, but there are other gods and there are people trying to raise these deities. They're high level fallen angels. Okay. Because they want the antichrist to rise and for this whole thing to take place. I'm going to be honest. I know this sounds like science fiction, but this is, this is very real to some other people. Okay. We just probably most of, most of us, you know, are trying to be God fearing and live a normal life. But to some of these people, this is um, a real game, you know, real uh, is a real deal. So, uh, luckily we are not alone and we do have forces, um, behind us. So when, what I was told then, um, I started getting information today as I woke up, I wrote this down, uh, my dream, and then it started unfolding more and I started getting more information. So then I started getting, then Jesus took over and started telling me stuff. And then he said, number seven is key. And I said, why? And he said, and then, he said, um, look it up. So I'm told when I'll read things, I get information like, yes, no, yes, here. No. Okay. So it means the spirit of God. And that means that God is mass manifesting in his spirit and with the, with the number seven. And so he, that's why we have seven days a week. We don't have six, we have seven. It's also a very sacred number to the Hebrews. Um, if we look at Sunday, the day, or you could some Catholic Saturday, Sunday, the day of rest, but that's just, just the day of rest is to say you're resting, not just because you're tolling, but you're resting because you're allowing God to take control. So when he says, take rest in me, he's saying, take comfort in me. That's what's going on. And that's what this message is going to end up being here. God's, God's pulling his hand out on this. Okay. Uh, in this, and so the solar system, uh, you know, we have nine planets, but we can see seven of them visibly. So seven's kind of a big number. And then you look about, if you look at Leviticus four, seven, it has to do with purification and perfection. So I got another, I got another message. Hold on. Um, got a message. I have these things. I have so many notes I carry around everywhere. I got another message for y'all. Um, and I want to go ahead and piggyback on this because the timing, March 30th, um, Purge Purifying Provisions. And it was in a deep dream. And uh, and it talked about, to, and, and it's a very long, and I, I may do the whole thing later because it's I'm not going to do it now. Okay. But I'll just tell you, it was five pages. And it was pur Purge, purge Purify Provisions. So just get basic provisions. God will work with that. But basically, purify your hearts. Um, purify your minds. Don't watch any creepy stuff. Okay. Uh, ban alcohol for the next two or three days. Um, you know, these kinds of things. Some of you might want to fast. This is spiritual warfare. That's what I'm talking about. Okay. So we need to be spiritually mature, but purging your heart of any hatred feelings, purifying yourself to God. What does that mean? Repent. God, I'm sorry. Maybe I've not put you on the top of my charts. Maybe uh, I have a to-do list and you're not always the first on it. Maybe I should thank you more for this great home and family and career, whatever it is. So you can't, you know, the thing about God, especially Jesus, man, I mean, he'll intercede for you anytime, any place, if, and he, even in hell, he'll come get you. Uh, that's how committed Jesus is. So it's not too late, but you do need to repent. Does that mean we're going home tomorrow? I mean, I don't know. I don't, I don't think so. Let's stick to the message at hand, but I mean, you know, I'm not like, God, I don't know. I mean, you just, you should always be ready quite honestly. Um, because when you're free of fear, you can live. Um, so let me go on. So he, then he talked about the number eight, which is tomorrow. And the eight, of course, we know is infinity. They're opening that infinity weird thing too. That's another thing. I don't want to get off topic. At topic, another scientific thing. There's a lot of things. Rockets going off that day. Uh, you know why the eight? Mainly, I'm concerned about the CERN thing and 
also about the dark matter. I want to talk about that. So the, and also this deconfiguration, there's more to it in the ionic sphere. So the number eight is a powerful and spiritually significant number that holds profound meaning across the various religious and spiritual practices. The number eight is often associated with rebirth and new beginnings. It symbolizes the resurrection of Jesus Christ who rose from the dead on the eighth day. So this could be in our favor. So, you know, if you have, if you have dark, you got light. If you have really intense dark, you're going to have some really intense God ass kicking it. Holy angels to sand. It, 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 that's how it goes. Okay. So uh, we don't want to give the other, you know, we want to be aware, but then we want to focus and do the spiritual warfare with, with team God. So we know about this CERN thing open. It is going to happen. We know that there's some people committed to that. Um, we also know, what do we know? We know that the, there is National Guard that's out, even in places like where I am in Charlotte, North Carolina. I saw it on the local news channel and they were here and they were talking about the word. I can't say it, so I read it on a piece of paper. This, I don't know if y'all can see this, but there is no reason they should be talking about that in Charlotte, North Carolina. I'm like, what? And they're here? And what does it have to do with the eclipse? And a lot of y'all need to ask why. Why? Why? That doesn't make sense. Why? Exactly. All right. So when things don't add up, they don't add up. So, uh, so we know that's going on. Um, Jesus told him, uh, my February 2nd, which you'll see that Thursday, um, the multiple things occurring. So let's go back to the word deconfiguration and, and what that means. So I put the word deconfiguration in and I, I was like, what? And it, some of this was very easy to find. Like the dark does not even hide. And, um, all right. So <laughs> this is, uh, thank y'all for your praying in the chat. I really appreciate that. Um, so it was easy to find a lot of these things. Number one was that, that the gov there was a government site. I can let y'all see this. Actually, I'm going to pull it up. It's not a big deal. I'm going to show you some other stuff. I found this government site. It's called NIST.gov as a greenhouse. It basically measures gas measurements and it came up under deconfiguration. I'm saying, well, what is air and gas emissions? What does air and deconfiguration have to do with one another? Okay. And then I found this, which I thought it was really interesting. And I will show you this. Let me see. Let me pull this up for you. Um, let me pull this up if I can do so here. All right, let me see. Let me pull this up here for you. Um, all right, uh, share screen, which will be, here we go. 10 things to know about the uh, ionosphere. Now, here we go. It's home to all the charged particles in Earth's atmosphere. The ionosphere is where Earth's atmosphere meets space. It changes sometimes unpredictably. It's home to many satellites. Disturbances can disrupt signals. It's influenced by weather, and it's influenced by space weather, too. It's constantly closed. The study of the ionosphere with invisible types of light. So some of the stuff I'm talking about is not going to be seen. This is why it's a spiritual battle, and there's science involved. Remember how four years ago they did something that had to do with science and spirituality that wasn't in our best interest? Okay. Okay. Well, imagine that same concept of spirituality and science. So here it's showing this little, I don't know, the, um, this is showing the sun cooks gases, the electrons. Okay. All right. So it's showing how the, okay, the orbital drag is showing these ions. And it, what it's showing here, if we have disruptions tomorrow, let's say, it's because, first of all, you know that the radio waves, these satellites, are not getting through because of what? The air, the ions. They are electrically charged. That's why when you see these chemtrails and all, this isn't good. They're changing the weather patterns, which I found that too. So you got to say, what does that have to do with Earth? Everything. What does that have to do with our health? Everything. So disturbances can cause disruptions. Weather. Okay, the ions, and it is affected by the weather, okay? So I'm not talking about natural weather stuff. I'm talking about other things. I'll show you in a minute. So it is influenced by the weather. Look at this. Uh, effects were shown by this from NASA satellites. And then space weather. What happens in space or what's being brought through in other dimensional realms can affect here too. 
Now we have a, there's constantly things that are going on. We can't always see the spectrum of light. Uh, and this is, this is here showing the far ultra ultraviolet spectrum measures the density of the ionosphere. The pink left is the nitrogen emissions. The green light, the blue is the oxygen emiss emissions. So I guess what I'm saying to you is that you might not be able to, um, you might not be able to see, uh, what's going on, but you can't see this right here, but it's still happening. So you get that concept. All right, so I want to show you something else. So these disturbances can, if things are out, it's not like, oh, South telephone pros are out. No, no, there's something deeper at hand. This is ionosphere. They're messing with not just the weather, but they're messing with the actual infrastructure of the ionosphere and, and also space, okay? So I want to show you this. Um, I thought this was interesting. I just want to show you this very quickly. Okay. This is kind of cool. I can show you this. Still talk to you. So I want to show you this. All right. All right. So I thought this was kind of odd. Here's this woman. Okay. I'm not even going to say her name. Put on a NASA PACE mission through the PACEs. And I looked at her title and I'm like, first of all, she's in charge of aerosol cloud and ocean integration testing. What does that have to do with space? That's the question should be why. Now, I'm not going to go on and explain her, but I'm just saying the fact there's a division with aerosol, the ionosphere. Now, I know some of you scientists may want to argue and say this or that. That's not really the point. I'm just trying to get you to think with this. Now, this one, I'm trying to have you draw your own conclusions. Okay. Now, this one here, we all know what this word is. We're not going to say it, but that's the word. <laughs> Right there, if you can see it. Uh, harp, the most powerful ionosphere heater on Earth. Hmm. So if they're heating up the atmosphere, the ionosphere, or the electron density, uh, it says here when then, well, let me read this first. When stimulated with high intensity radio waves, the ionosphere responds with baffling and beautiful displays. Okay, that sounds great. Could have something to do with global warming, right? That is man could be possibly manufactured. Okay, so I just want you to look at this. They talk about atmospheric shrapnel. That's the part that kind of concerns me. The fact is the portals are open up. They're also doing the technology. And this they have whole programs that are working on weather that are changing it and so forth. Then what does that mean for tomorrow? And, what you know, what exactly? Remember, we're not seeing exactly everything, but you can do your research. But it says, let's talk about the atmospheric shrapnel. The ionosphere is the region of the upper atmosphere characterized by large populations of free electrons and ions. The atmospheric shrapnel that arises when UV photons from the sun knock electrons from the electric gas. Now, I've been seeing these huge solar flares, these huge. Um, that could be have an effect with this tomorrow. I don't think this is man-made. I, I mean, I do think this is man-made. Um, that's my, my um, opinion on this, okay? Um, but I'm just giving you, very easily, I found this. And I found here that using this technology that I have on this, pulled up right here, that the primary targets include plasma frequency, a function of electron density, multiples of cyclotron frequencies of electrons spiraling around the magnetic field, and hybrid resonates that combine these fundamental frequencies. Part of that is radio waves. So um, not only can they not be just down, but they can be controlled. Just like because radio waves are also light waves, those unseen things, they can be seen just like us um, light workers know about um, sound waves. There's light waves that can heal. The angels heal in light waves. They can uh, they can heal in light waves. But also things can be destroyed in that manner too, like soil. So, or, or fill in the blanks. So anyway, we've got here, I wanted to mention that. Um, and I wanted you to see that there. So I'm saying it's not just, I want you to talk, I really want to talk about our atmosphere and our ionosphere. And then I've got here, large, large ionosphere disturbances produced by this heart facility and it's by this is under radio science and the key points here where heart facility produces unique results 
And then artificial plasma clouds are emissions and optical signatures. Future HARP experiments are needed to explain physics. Now, I think this is kind of um, that I am going to... Um, there was one other thing, if you're interested in it, I'll put it up and then I'll go on to my, my wrapping this up. This is atmospheric physics heating up the heavens. This is a person, uh, this Sharon Weinberger, wrote an article, which you can pay for. What is it? I don't know, whatever the price is. But battling rumors of death beams, mind control, atmosphere research in Alaska. And this is a whole report on it if you want to read something such as that. But you can see... I want you to think differently how this is. And I want to go back and explain some back to my, to my mission. I'm going to get out of this. Um, all right, good. I'm back now. All right. So cool. So let me go back here. Um, so in this thing, when I heard I am the true God, my power is great. Nothing stands between me and my people. That was what I was shown with these angels. I saw the dark matter. I saw this, I saw the atmosphere, um, coming in was thicker and harder to breathe that the dark matter came down to earth where the soul is and there were new breeds of bugs like they were membrane squishy little scorpion things also saw there were many etheric dark soul less soul less beings released upon the world trying to find host and humans to feed off soul energy also saw there was a molecular um, it was like a small resin. It was, it was something in the air you couldn't see, but it was like a resin that landed on the, the plant. Okay. So I, I, I remember what we had before that was in the air that was, um, whatever. Remember that? I don't want to say the word, but possibly could be that. I don't know. I'm not going out. That's all I'm saying. I don't know. I'm, I'm praying that none of this you know, but I get a message from God. I have to say this. So I was told not to go out April 8th or to breathe the air, but the indoors for that to at least possible four days. And then I was told um, um, that this will be purified. And I was also told that other planets, other uh, beings that are loving beings from other planets were going to assist with this. And I said, who? They said the Andromedans. They said they have the, I was told they have the technology to be able to come in and to neutralize what's going on. You think, well, why would they do that? Who are they? Well, if they're using alien tag, <laughs> say in a way that's not a positive thing, then they're like, oh, well, we're going to use it in a positive way. Meaning, how do I say this? If it was used originally, the, 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 this alien technology given to certain humans that was not used positively, like say if this is not used positively, then they're going to be here to help, to say, okay, we're going to help humanity here. But they do, what I was told is that these Andromedans, um, that they do not want to, uh, uh, they care and they didn't want us to have any negative effects. And so what they're going to do, they have this technology to repair broken timelines. Remember the multiple suns and the multiple, I saw different things merging into one. And to, they're, uh, to repair these broken timelines and atmosphere is changes. It takes three to four days. That's why there's ripple effects. There's portals still open. So that's why they were saying stay inside to kind of keep control your environment. And, uh, I was also told not to look up into the, if I did look into the clouds, not tomorrow, like today or what have you, uh, that you would see crafts in the clouds that they are in there helping us because they want to reverse this and that, um, they, they could take out the majority of the, the damages that what I was told in my dream, okay, that could be done, but that not all of it, but God would handle the rest and then till, uh, and then till then, you know, my thoughts there are just to, um, if you can, if you can, I mean, so much is going to be done over the computer, you know, try to stay inside, pray, um, bless your homes, give it to God, uh, ask for Christ to shield you from all, uh, toxics or spiritual harm in the name of Jesus and plead the blood of Jesus, um, uh, for you and humanity, you know, so always pray for others. And, um, and so I just want to let you know, I want to think I've gone over everything, but I'm just saying it's not as it appears. 
and that for God to come through and says, I am the one true God, my God is great, nothing stands between me and my people. And then I got the word disconfiguration. So there is a reset, but what we can do is to have a reset with God because God is ultimately he just said in control. <laughs> so we need to side with God and just, you know, when he says take rest, that means take ease, take calm, take to know that God is in control. And all we really need to do is just kind of purify our hearts and just, uh, I would say just kind of hunker down, you know, for if you can a day to four days and just see how this plays out. Cause you a lot of this may be invisible and hidden, and then we won't see later on until the manifestations of things. So you won't, you might not be able to see anything, but, uh, use this as a time to really get close to your family and, and to just know that this is not the first attempt at things to go on and that we are in a spiritual war. And y'all already know that. I'm not telling you anything that I don't know. And the thing is, God put us here because we matter. And each of us, we have a voice. Our hearts are connected through uh, Christ's love. We have this beautiful connection with one another all across the world. And don't believe anything else, okay? And whatever is going on, just don't be, um, don't let the wool be pulled over your eyes. But at the same time, just stand in God's God's protective glory, and uh, you know, really just reassure your covenant with Him. And look, if you want to do it, this thing uh, tomorrow, the meditation, April eighth at three three three, my friend Dick Dingy's. His email is below. Just email him and ask for the link and you can be a part of it. I may be a part of it. I'm going to be in prayer tomorrow. I may be a part of it. And, you know, I'm not God. I don't know anything, but I just wanted to share my dream with you and just know that all of us, we're all connected. If you just allow yourself and if you get messages, don't, you know, just be grateful for them and just keep it in a little journal. And, um, you know, I'm not the only one I'm sure that's probably getting things. So look, thank you all for watching and I really appreciate all your prayers. Thank you so much. And then, and then, uh, Peter and all the different ones that have showed up today. Uh, I love you all and we're in this together and it's going to be good. We're going to get through this and then we'll work out, we'll figure out how to get through the September one. And then we're all going to go on the galactic cruise in 2024 <laughs> with me being a speaker and then we're going to go hang out and go on the beach and then listen to spiritual stuff and hear me speak and we're going to have a blast and talk about mermaids and stuff it'll be great so and i'll be talking about more about that later but let's get through this and uh sending you my love all right bye